At this point, I've gotten a decent number of reviews under my belt, and this is one that I've been incredibly excited to do. It was the whole reason I decided to review the Tales series. Welcome back to Shinky JRPGs and welcome to my Tales of Eternia review. Tales of Eternia was a JRPG released on the original PlayStation in 2000 and on the PSP in 2005. This game may look similar to a game named Tales of Destiny 2. That is because they are the exact same game. Back when it was initially localized back in 2001, Mattel owned the copyright to the term Eternia with He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, which led to the name change despite two years later getting an actual Tales of Destiny 2 on the PS2. It's led to confusion all over the place, kind of like North America's Final Fantasy 2 and 4 debacle. This game was actually my very first Tales game, and was the one that solidified my love of the series and JRPGs as a whole. I remember it quite vividly. I was in high school at the time, I went to go visit a friend, and he had rented this strange game I had never seen before. He was playing Tales of Eternia. He was on the Volt boss battle. He handed me a controller which had thrown me for a loop because an RPG that's multiplayer? That doesn't happen. I had never played an action RPG quite like it before, and as they say, the rest is history. Anyways, strap yourselves in, grab a drink, and get ready to hear about my thoughts and opinions on Tales of Eternia. Tales of Eternia begins with your main hero, Reed Herschel a hunter from the backwater town of Rasheens, along with his childhood friend Farah Orsted, a farmhand from the same village. Speaking of which, while these characters are a hunter and a farmhand, these two traits of them are never again alluded to throughout the entire game, save for maybe one or two mentions here or there. Seems somewhat pointless, you would think there would be like a hunting or a farming side quest somewhere in the game, but unfortunately not. Anyways, back on topic. One day, they see a giant poke or a giant orb fall from the sky, and they go to inspect it. In the wreckage, they find a strange little girl who cannot speak English. They take her to the village elder, who wants to get rid of her because she could be the disaster that could fall upon the village, due to her having dark skin and unintelligible speech. Yeah, this is actually said in the game. Anyway, as this girl is not welcome in the village, Reed and Farrah decide to take this girl named Meredith to the local university to see if they can find someone who knows where she might be from or understand the language that she's speaking, and off goes our adventure. So just a little bit of a forewarning, just a little bit of a trigger warning, mentioning racism. One of the concepts of this game as it starts is racism, a seemingly common theme when it comes to the Tales series. Meredith is a girl that has come from the land of Celestia, another planet that coexists with our hero's land of Inferia. The history of Inferia states that anything from Celestia will cause disaster to the land of Inferia, so naturally Meredith is not welcome in Inferia. Our party has to hide the fact that she is Celestian. This leads to many JRPG cliches, such as being thrown in jail, or having Meredith run off when someone confronts her. Luckily, the whole concept of racism isn't exactly a main focus, but it does happen, so just a warning if that's something that makes you feel uncomfortable. Spoiler warning, everyone gets along in the end. The gameplay of Tales of Eternia was such a huge jump compared to 1997's Tales of Destiny. While Destiny used the enhanced linear motion battle system, Tales of Eternia gets what's called the aggressive linear motion battle system, or ALMBS. Did you know that each Tales game has a unique name for its battle system? No? Well then you sir and or madam learned something today and I think that deserves a like and a sub. Anywho, regarding the battle system changes from Destiny, first of all you have a manual mode giving you full control over your player character available almost from the get go and it only requires a key item, as opposed to wasting an accessory slot. Secondly, no longer do spells fully freeze the screen while the animation goes off. They briefly freeze the screen for a split second while the screen moves over to the caster for visual appeal, and then the spell goes off, allowing full movement and control while the spell is in effect. The only limitation to this is you can only have one mid-tier or higher spell going off at one time. For example, you can't have Meteor Storm and Indignation in animation at the same time. This actually works with enemies as well, so if you have Meteor Storm going off, an enemy spell will not go off, which means you have extra time to cancel that spell in case the spell in animation doesn't hit the enemy. I'd say that's a worthy trade-off if you ask me. Combos for characters are unique per character in this one. So you have your spellcasters like Max, 
like Eel and Merity, they don't have any combo ability. Outside of Max, later on, you can cancel his spells into each other. And then you have Chat, which only has one type of attack, so she can do a couple attacks and then a special attack. Now with Reed and Farah, it's a little bit different. Reed can do up to three attacks into a level one skill into a level two skill. And then Farah is very unique when it comes to combat. So Farah can attack twice, and then she can use a ground ability, and then a ground to air ability, and then an air to ground ability. So she has a little bit more combo potential, which really opens it up. Tales of Eternia as a whole was quite a bit faster than the precursors in the series, making it much more enjoyable and more of an engaging battle system, as opposed to Fantasia and Destiny, where it resulted to just running towards the enemy, attacking, and then running back to your starting position over and over and over. In addition to that, Tales of Eternia added quite a bit of mini-games. You have games like Cramel Ball, where you're supposed to use bursts of energy to control a giant ball and crush your opponent with it. And then you have Wiss. Wiss is a very enjoyable mini-game. It's essentially Uno, but instead of colors and numbers, you're using elements and attack cards. I'm awful at it, but it's still fun. Though, I do wish that you could play Wiss with your friends, but unfortunately, that's not available. But, I mean, I guess you can always play Uno. Exploration in Tales of Eternia also goes over the top. Areas are much bigger and have many more hidden areas. In addition, you also have hidden items such as Lens. There are 60 Lens in the game that you can find. Every 10 Lens, you're given a reward that cannot be found anywhere else, and they're usually quite good rewards such as accessories that block status effects or reduce elemental damage. And Tales of Eternia is where the Wonder Chef started. The Wonder Chef is an NPC who likes to hide as inanimate objects, something like a giant plant or an anchor or a piggy bank. At one point, he even imitates the town drunk. If you find him, he will teach you a recipe and you can cook to add a whole plethora of effects such as healing HP or TP or curing statuses. Tales of Eternia is the first game that had a cooking system. It was not available in the original Fantasia or the original Destiny. They were using food sacks up until Tales of Eternia. So having a Wonder Chef really encouraged you to explore every nook and cranny in the game. Towns and dungeons are explored in typical Tales fashion. However, the encounter rate of some of these dungeons are absolutely insane. Thankfully, you have holy bottles to reduce the encounter rate. Sometimes it felt as if they were 100% necessary though, as you would get into encounters every 2-3 to three steps and it's incredibly frustrating. Luckily, encounters in puzzle rooms generally get shut down, so you can focus on the puzzles instead of raging at overly frequent encounters. Graphics are another huge change from the previous Tales games. While Destiny and Fantasia use a chibi art style, the art style of Tales of Eternia is more of a realistic humanoid style with accurately portrayed limbs and torsos. As per most Tales titles, Tales of Eternia is very, very colorful and very pleasing to look at. Especially with top-notch pixel art, it's really a treat for the eyes. The game still goes with an anime art style, which is shown in the skit system. Unfortunately, in the English version, skits are devolved to only telling you which direction to go to progress with the plot. In the Japanese version, the skits are like future Tales games with silly conversations between the characters to enhance character development. I personally have no idea why this was changed, but at least they weren't entirely removed. While I adore and love Tales of Eternia, it's by no means the perfect game. I feel like Tales of Eternia probably has the weakest soundtrack in the series. That's not to say it's bad by any means at all. Other Tales games just outshine it in the OST department. Tales of Eternia does have some amazing music. For example, Eternal Mind, which you may have heard of if you play Tales of Azalea 2, it's used as Ludger's ringtone in that game, originated in Tales of Eternia. As well as the Van Altaya sailing music, and of course, Ability Test, the battle theme from Tales of Fantasia. As for the battle music in Tales of Eternia, some of them are amazing, such as the aforementioned Ability Test, as well as Inferia Battle and Mid-Boss 2, which is almost like some sort of music before dubstep was a thing. Like, seriously, just listen to it. See? Dubstep. Time Battle is a remix of Deus' battle theme from Tales of Fantasia, and it's beautiful. Like I said, it has some good tunes, but I feel overall the music in Eternia is a step down from other Tales games. 
Wait a minute, hold up. I can't forget to talk about the voice acting. Now, the localization of this game only has English voice acting, which was a first for the series as Destiny and Fantasia only had the Japanese dub. And I can only explain this English voice acting as comical. You have incredibly underacted parts, such as Reed saying a lot of his tech names like Demon Hammer. Demon Hammer! Or Omega Demon Chaos. Omega Demon Chaos! Then you have some cutscenes that are absolutely ridiculous and overacted for literally no reason at all. Keel, why are you quiet? Why are you looking at me like that? Oh, for love to blue ah, moon. Shut up! All the voice acting is terrible, but it's the good type of terrible. Making you look forward to the next voice cutscene so you can see just how much of a dumpster fire the voicing in that scene is. You know what they say, good is fine, but terrible keeps you coming back asking for more. Okay, no one says that, but they should, because it's a good saying. Right? It is, isn't it? So, how long should you expect to spend with Tales of Eternia? Well, Tales of Eternia has a ton of side content. You could blast through the game in 20 to 30 hours if you just focus on main story and ignore most, if not all, of the side content. Or you can easily spend upwards of 70 hours. On average though, I'd say the game is about 45 to 50 hours on a casual first playthrough where you don't ignore every non-mandatory side quest. I will mention, however, if you want to play through the game a second time, you can actually do an extra bonus dungeon with a super boss. So that'll add quite a bit of time to your gameplay because there is a lot of grinding involved. Pacing wise, the game isn't too bad. No really long cutscenes that will have you screaming, just get on with it. And cutscenes don't really drag on. They're pretty short and sweet, letting you get back to the gameplay relatively quickly without feeling like the cutscene was a waste of time. So yes, Tales of Eternia, while my favorite game in the series, does have its shortcomings. Would I go ahead and say it's the best game in the series? Not quite, but it's in the top three as far as I'm concerned. Hey, maybe I should do a Top Tales Games video. Let me know if that's something you'd be interested in in the comments below. While you're at it, give the video a like and subscribe. Have you played Tales of Eternia before? What were your thoughts on it? Do you have a story or history with the game? Let me know. I'm always in the comments to interact with the community. That's the meat and potatoes, folks. Thanks for tuning in and have a wonderful day.